problem with this identification. Yes. I don't know where it starts. It happens quite often that I wake up and there's nothing. And then it takes a moment, two moments, I don't know how long, and something happens and there comes that first thought or picture. And then suddenly the whole universe is there. At that moment there is no identification. It's happening within a quietness of awareness, just a movie unfolding. But my, my problem with some of it is anger. We were talking about anger a little bit yesterday. And in these last two, three years, I experienced a lot of rage, I would say, anger, rage, frustration caused by circumstances, which are media and experience of political events. And I was wondering whether that is triggered in a certain way to make me part of that evilness, or is that evilness me? When you wake up in the morning, there is no identification, mm -hmm. and that identification slowly builds. It builds through a reconnection with the memory mm. of the system. The thing is that that state when you wake up in the morning and there is not as yet the identification, that is actually the pure state of surrender mm. because the system is not listening to the ego in that moment. Mm. It is simply there and it is not in a functional state of an identified being. Mm. So that is one thing, the reason why that experience of isness is there is because there is no ego at play for those few moments and then the ego starts to take over and then it is a question of how much do you give in to the ego or not. This rage and frustration you speak about in the terms of the Neo-Advaitin approach are called pictures that you either associate with or not. The thing with all of this is it's a matter of interpretation and they can be interpreted as pictures that are happening with which you either associate or you don't or they can also in very deconstructed material terms be attributed to actual waves, electromagnetic waves that are taking over the system which have as much a place in a spiritual quest or in a spiritual approach as the so-called spirit does, you know, because spirit is matter. That is what is being said here. It is all matter. And so when your system experiences rage, to associate that rage as being something which has evolved in your system is essentially to accept ego. But if the approach is that that rage or that anger uh, is something which has taken over the system because the system called Sudama, a very beautiful name by the way, has lost its surrender in that moment. You cannot be angry, you cannot be in rage if you are in surrender. So the approach of the Neo-Advaitin is to attribute everything that happens as a sort of an image on a screen which you either relate to or not. But the approach taken here, the aim of which is to expand the consciousness within your system. If you don't leave, if you don't detach, if you don't consider what is happening to you to be an image, then you also realize that it's a real thing. And so you take on... You become Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. You're standing up with your bow in your hand and you're ready to to shoot down whatever it is which is standing in the way of the joyous experience which is born of surrender. So, what if you were to say that this anger that is happening, firstly, it's not me, it is something that is taking over this body and I'm going to refuse it entry. It is something which is collectively there in the atmosphere. I was speaking yesterday about how anger erupted 
about 20 years ago when the knowledge was manifesting, I had, uh, I was curious about this whole anger thing because it's quite something, it's a powerful thing around all the time, you know. And what was received was that it was born out of the first and early attempts of early human beings, the rishis at that time, all around the world to experiment with the sexual energy. And they tried to see what will happen if that sexual energy is, uh, is first suppressed, then allowed to expand, but then contracted again in the system. So they were playing with this sexual energy and trying to understand it. And through those experiments in the suppression of that sexual energy, anger was born as a phenomenon, as an emotional phenomenon in in the collective atmosphere. So when you are getting angry, if you see that anger as something in any way connected to you, then it becomes yours. And in other words, you're bending to the ego. But if you were to say, no, this anger is entering my system, certainly one can say these are semantics, but semantics also do influence how you live your life, you know? So then you say, okay, um, I'm not going to allow this, I'm pushing it out. Because it's a face of the ego. You push it out and suddenly you're anger free. This system called Sudama is anger free. The moment when that happens, it happens because there is surrender. You cannot get rid of anger in the system unless you bend and surrender for a given moment. You're bending and surrender to the to the truth of your system, and in that moment, that anger has no place. So it's a two-way uh, sort of action. And the more you bend, the less anger in the system. The deeper you bend, the more you live in the truth, you know, the less anger in the system. So that anger being a face of ego, it's not you. It's a result of something inherited. You're German, you have inherited a nice, very colorful inheritance, but also it is the socialization process that propels that anger and there is a reason underlying that and that is that this now applies to you from what I'm sensing, that there has been a lifetime of searching there and finding also. And now you're sort of zoning in into actually touching the truth with your fingertips. You're sort of encircling, you know, it's like... But that thing has not happened yet. So there is a sort of a, a... I wouldn't call it a rage, but a deep readiness and a tinge of almost anxiety, angst in German, I would say, that this won't happen in this lifetime. So that causes all these other things to rise. And the moment you start to zone in on the truth, on the Antar Guru, on the Antar Atman, you're suddenly going to lose all of that anger and rage. It will fall away. There's no question about it if you do the practice of tuning in, you know. And the moment you feel even a small vibration of anger, it's out, it's a no, because it is the ego in action, ahankar. So when you take up that practice, and it'll go very fast with you, because you seem to have a lifetime of, of seeking and finding behind you, so at one point you also have to find it and touch it with your fingertips, you know. And if you have spent so many years detaching, neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, then, of course, you're also not that. So now you have to go into surrender mode and tune in and touch the truth with your fingertips. That's self-realization. And it is extremely near for you. You're, you're just there. That anger will fall away very fast. In fact, I don't see it so much in you. I think you're also over, like, a, you know, even a little bit of anger for you appears to be a lot more likely like that, I would say. So take up the practice and see what happens, experiment. What do I have to do or what do you have to do to do that? Technically, 
every time you undertake an action, in the beginning especially, of this kind of a practice, you're asking yourself, where does this action come from? Where does the urge to this action arise from? Is it arising from the truth of this system? Or is it arising from the ahankar, from the ego? And if it is arising from the ego, if you sense, mm -mm, then you cannot take that action. Then you step back, you wait.